Welcome to fucking boondocking with Sean, day 9 of a 16 day, 3,302 mile road trip in which we didn't pay shit for campsites. Now I don't know about you, but I paid a shitload in the past to camp at shitty concrete covered campgrounds where you're so close to your neighbors you can hear them shit in the morning. Look at this place, Beaver Creek, Montana, not a motherfucker in sight and free as fuck. We woke up to a bit of ice, but I didn't have to listen to the crackling and popping sounds of someone's strained asshole whilst I drink my coffee. Today we're leaving the camper behind and are going to drive about 40 minutes and go check out Yellowstone National Park. We've never been before, so it's kind of fucking exciting. As you can see from my, uh, that's my excitement face right there. So. And of course, there's traffic getting in. I have my fuck face on right now. But anyway, there's not much to see at first, and then it starts looking like shit's on fire as you approach the geothermally active areas, and then you're like, oh, fuck. Yellowstone National Park is a fucking huge area, 2.2 million acres, and it has a threesome with Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. Idaho, Utaho, fucking with three states at a time. I know, I try. Speaking of hoes, here's my feisty hoe and I walking up to the first geyser we've ever seen, and one of the hottest ones in the park. Hot like my wifey poo. His temper is. <laughs> anyway, this is Barrel Springs, and it runs between 188.5 degrees Fahrenheit to 192 degrees, or if you aren't from America, then it's 89 degrees Celsius, just under the boiling point of water. The technical term, though, is hot AF. As fuck. Fuck off! Fuck off! Anyway, next we went to what I think is a must-see if you're coming here. It's the Norris Geyser Basin. This is the hottest, most acidic, and most dynamic geys geyser, geyser? Wow. geyser basin in Yellowstone. It's like a fucking tour of Dante's Inferno, but with convenient boardwalks and shit. It's home to massive numbers of microorganisms that thrive in this hellscape and are visible as different colors on the ground. I mean, there are fucking universes of tiny-ass critters in these bacterial mats that have no idea there's some motherfucker taking a video of it, nor do they know what a motherfucker or a video even is. They're just going about their business, clueless to the larger universe. I think we are very much like that. Have you ever laid on your back at night under a clear sky and suddenly experienced a sort of download of enormity which gives a glimpse of perspective that we are so fucking tiny and the universe is so fucking massive and your paradigm cracks and all you can say is fuck. I wonder if there's a little bacteria down there wondering what its universe is like until, you know, some dumbass drops a cigarette butt on it or drives a fucking truck through it. But thankfully that won't happen here. Yellowstone is America's very first protected national park. Since 1872, motherfuckers have been prohibited from being dumbasses here. Fun fact, this strange, beautiful place is on the edge of a massive caldera, the Yellowstone Volcano. It's one of the largest on Earth. It erupted 640,000 years ago, and the last lava flow was about 70,000 years ago. So that's why we're here. We thought, you know, we'd check it out just in case it blows up again and causes an extinction event and shit. There's something rather humbling about flirting with the reality that although the Earth is at a very stable phase of its existence, shit can still happen. It makes the dumb shit our minds worry about shut the fuck up when faced with something actually worrisome, but I'm sure there's nothing to worry about unless you live here. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not kidding. Now, if you come here, stay on the damn paths. The ground here is called Sulfatara and is unstable. Basically, the sulfuric acid breaks all the rock down and you've got what appears to be dry ground on top but maybe a thin skin covering a steam superheated deep mud. You wouldn't want to sink to your nuts or your butts in that. I'd sink to my nuts in something else though. <laughs> Ain't she fucking adorbs? Anyway, I know. I could go on and on about this place, but it's best you just come fucking see it for yourself before it blows up. Also, here's a little tip. Uh, you won't see much just in one day, and I recommend coming early in the morning and go straight to the thing you want to see most because the later it gets, the more crowded it gets. And the next thing you know, you're standing around a geyser packed with motherfuckers shoulder to shoulder like blowflies nibbling away at a dead buffalo's asshole. Now, Yellowstone is home to an abundant diversity of large mammals, so you want to be careful not to hit them, especially a species called Homo sapien dumbassius, which are so dumb they wait to cross right in fucking in front of you. Dumbass. Well, this here is the next place we went, and it's called Who Fucking Cares? Look at all the dumbassiuses crowded here. Fuck them, let's go! I concur, my dear. Fuck them indeed. Well, if you like driving, then Yellowstone is the place for you. Except for all the dumbasses. Get off the fucking sidewalk, dumbass. Hi! Oh wait, I look terrible! Turn that fucking thing around! 
Okay, okay, I'll turn it. Wifey Poo is a bit of body dysmorphia, I think. She's beautiful, but doesn't think so herself. Watching commercials whilst growing up in the 1970s has probably fucked up many a woman. Although these days it's not so great either. I'm immune because I'm ugly and I just don't give a fuck. Look at this big geothermal pimple. Well, we drove on and eventually found a pullout in this random boardwalk, just leading out to nowhere special, but special to us because there's no motherfuckers here. There are all kinds of signs and shit telling you about the landscape and history and whatnot. I love places just like this. No major feature, crowded with fuckers or gift shops, just the wind and the scenery, and you can really get a feel for a place that way. You can imagine that it might not have looked much different 11,000 years ago when Paleo Native Americans first inhabited this place and started making shit out of the abundant obsidian. These people were called the Clovis people, and even way back then they traded obsidian as far east as the Mississippi. Would that I could build a time machine, I'd love to come back here and chill with the Clovis people, but of course the danger of that is obvious. For as soon as I realized that the women folk didn't wear tops when it was warm, I'd be like, uh, time machine's broke, I'm fucking staying. Just kidding. Not kidding. And check it out, the path led to an aspen grove, Populus tremuloides. When the wind blows, the leaves tremble. Uh, aspens mostly grow from their extensive root system as clones, and a genetically identical grove can survive thousands of years. Hmm, thousands of years. I wonder if they've seen any boobs. Now, it's not every day you come upon a buffalo in the wild, but perhaps it's even rarer that one takes a shit whilst you're filming it. Well, before we headed back to camp, we uh, checked out this fucking amazing canyon overlook. There's like this wooden deck and stairs built, and it's fucking steep and I dare say terrifying, but beautiful. And uh, look at this uh, shit here. I thought it was a man-made retaining wall or some shit at first, but nope, that's old lava. Now, the way that happens is I have no fucking idea, but I do know that since the eruption that occurred and cooled, a river carved out this fucking massive canyon. Moving liquid is fucking amazing. Well, we went back to camp, and speaking of moving liquid, let's move some liquid down our gullets, shall we? After a long day of worrying about volcanoes, muddy nuts, watching a bison shit, and contemplating ancient boobs, I like to hydrate, so cheersies. We decided to go for a little stroll and look for boobs in the woods, but the only boobs in here were hers, which is fine, I quite like them. So, anyway. And there's our campsite, way over there in the middle of nowhere. All right, well, after seeing all the sights and doing all the things, the only le thing left to do is go be with the wifey poo and have a dance party and dance like no one's watching because, you know, no one's fucking watching. That's the thing about boondocking. We become the original us again. There's kind of a purity to it. We're firmly rooted in the right now and every woe we've been through together and every anticipated worry cannot exist in the now. Like a shadow facing the sun. Nothing left to do but have fun. So, we'll see you next episode. Toodaloo.